Now the question is, who let the dogs in? Who? <laughs> who? Who? Caesar did because he said he said he said welcome to my heaven. Now this is the world that we're used to seeing you in, Caesar. Yes. Of course, is the dog whisperer. We're also joined by uh, five dogs from Clever Canines. Hopefully, I have their names right: Nico, Ozzy, Ash, Matilda, and Cookie. I don't know who's who. I'm really sorry. They don't. They don't mind. They don't mind. They just. They're, you know, what I love about what you did, because normally I don't get that a lot, the way you welcome them, welcome them, welcome into your space. You were pretty quiet most of the time. Oh my God! Look at all those puppies. And that creates a little chaos. Mm. But you did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, let's talk about what what people tend to do incorrectly. That's one of them. They they sort of create too much excitement, right? Too much excitement. When a dog is coming to you, don't focus on the eyes. Don't, oh my God, don't do that, because then you create tension, hmm. right? So it's best if you just let them come in and you breathe. So they, they're feeling the relaxation. And, and so what they really want to do is they want to smell you. They don't want to see you. They don't want to hear you. Right. Right. They want to smell you. Then the next step is they want to feel you. Then once they feel you, they're going to give you a cue. And they're going to say, I trust you or I don't. Hmm. So this is a don't trust. This is a trust. So once they give you that clue, then you can touch. What you're doing is reinforcing that state. But at the same time, you show respect. That's why they're going to give you respect. So my clients, what they do is they go, they do this thing where they go with their hand like this to the right. dog. Like the dog has a great nose. So this is disrespectful to the nose of a dog. This is ah. unnecessary. I don't know okay, who invented it. So what it. do you do? I mean, even if you're not a dog owner, when you're just approaching a, a dog. Don't, don't approach. Just don't approach. OK. Don't approach because it's best for them to come to you so they can smell you. See, it's very important for them to do this. OK. And then it's very important for them to feel your energy. So you just stay calm. But you don't have to do that whole thing. Oh, We've the been, whole thing. The whole reaching. The whole, oh, my God! God. OK. Because <laughs> you, said, you said before when we spoke that, that calm, that is the, the sort of the head space for them. This is what my clients be, want. This, that they can be trained in this kind of space. First, right? you have to create a state of mind to train. If you don't have the state of mind, you can't really train because the mind is, is not in the state of listening. Mm -hmm. See, you can only train what is listening, right? So this state of mind, this consummate the state, then you can bring, for example, food or, for example, toys, things that motivate them, things that inspire them. Then you can start conditioning them. So you show the food, for example, then they sit, then you reward. You see, then they lay down, then they sit. Then once you do certain movements, you want a certain reaction. So you don't even have to speak. Now you talk a lot, obviously, about the pack. That's sort of the pack mentality. Yes. Where does the human fit into the pack? Because and the, that's the important. leadership. So, see, right now we're in the back, but they're in a consummate state. But normally, the human have to take the leader position, right? So this is how you become the role model. This is how you set rules, boundaries, and limitations. As parents, we pretty much play the authority figure who loves them. Mm. We can't just play a, a, a loving figure because then the kids take over. <laughs> Right. You see what I mean? So the, in relationships, somebody has to lead the relationship. So it only makes sense that a human leads the relationship because dogs don't know the cars can actually hit them and hurt them. So for that purpose, you know, for, for um, caution purposes or for, you know, crossing the street, the street purposes, it's very important that we, uh, that we take the position of leader. But how do you overcome, I mean, because a lot of the, the, the relationships that I see yeah. on your show, have kind of devolved into a fearful relationship where the owner has become afraid of their dogs, yeah. right? How do you kind of get past that? Well, you need, you need somebody that can actually lead you, guide you. See, a human have to see it to believe it. So in their mind, they, they can't see their dogs behaving properly. So then somebody mm. like myself or, or a professional come to people's home and show them what's possible. Then the fear doesn't have that much space in your mind anymore. Now you see the possibility uh, with somebody else. Now it's not the dog. So the first thing we have to remove is it's not the dog's fault, mm. right? So the human have to take 100% responsibility because they, the human is the one who created that state of mind. You see, when they're puppies, yeah. you, you, you just have a, a very curious uh, species. They don't have issues. Right. And so the issues are developed uh, because the human does not fulfill the needs of a dog, exercise, discipline, affection. Exercise, discipline, yeah, affection. Yeah, nose, eyes, ears, calm, assertive energy. Wow. Well, you have an extraordinary gift, and we're so happy to have you here today. You can actually meet Cesar Milan today. He's doing a meet and greet from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Canadian Tire at 250 Shawville Way Southeast. You can bring your dogs. Your dog can meet Cesar too, because of course they're take a picture. They're huge fans, <laughs> and you yeah, can take a picture. Can I get a picture with you after? Sure. Okay. More information <laughs> at BreakfastTelevision.ca. Thank you so much. Thank for coming you. Ahead.